Lads, Fortnite Absolute Doom is in full swing, and I think it's about time we did a complete weapon and item tier list. Now when it comes to modern Fortnite, we have two distinct types of gameplay, and that is build mode and zero build mode. So when it comes to all these items, I'm gonna rank them based on whether they're good in build mode, zero build mode, or if they're just the best weapon all around. Then I'm gonna go ahead and rank all the mythic items and the healing items as well. And I'm gonna keep my descriptions pretty general in this tier list. If you wanna see more in-depth analysis, more strategies and guides, I recommend you subscribe. Comment down below what your go-to loadout is this season, and of course, code sourheart in the fortnite item shop when it comes to weapons i like to start with the longest distance first and we have the brand new monarch pistol and this thing is absolutely devastating it can hit for 60 to 70 damage and it can do that very rapidly it also runs off of your light ammo so it doesn't contend with ar play at all this is something you can use indefinitely in squad games without messing with your teammates and it's also highly customizable so i'm gonna have to put this as one of the best weapons of this season i think it excels in pretty much every scenario and its power level is really based on your skill we move into the rifles and we have the returning striker weapon set specifically starting with the burst striker i think this is a damn good gun and burst weapons generally give you a huge advantage in build mode however it's so damn precise so accurate and now these striker weapons are moddable so i have to say this thing is good in build and zero build this is definitely one of the best weapons in the game right now and these long distance burst rifles generally are whenever they're in the game next we have the striker automatic and while this thing is a damage monster it also has quite a bit of recoil and with recent changes in this season if you are using controller on on PC, you're gonna have virtually no aim assist. And because of that reason, I would not recommend using this in zero build mode, which is all about sustained fire, tracking, holding your reticule on your target. However, I would recommend this for build mode because that fire rate will chew through walls. And when you're in a close quarter situation, the DPS will win you a lot of fights. Next, we have the combat AR. And I feel very similar about this thing to the striker automatic. However, it's got a bit less kick, and I think because it's been in the game longer, it's better balanced against build mode. So this is the automatic rifle I would recommend taking in zero build. It's gonna have a little bit less damage than the striker, but be much more forgiving with the recoil. Moving to the ranger pistol, this thing is okay. You really gotta kit it to get the maximum efficiency out of it, and it doesn't have the fire rate to really hold up in build mode. And honestly, when it comes to the arms race of the rifle category, I don't think it really has the DPS to keep up i like this thing at the beginning of chapter five but now i think it has become our first truly distinct useless weapon this is something that you're just going to switch for any other automatic weapon you find on the ground now the hyper smg is almost as bad as the ranger pistol but the thing that saves it is that as an smg it has enhanced build damage and for that reason you will want to pick this up in build mode if you can't get anything else the problem is is that it's severely lax at range which means if you want to be fully combat effective you'll have to pick up a third weapon maybe this is something you'll pair with the monarch pistol but truthfully the striker ar has like 30 more dps now we have the double smg and this thing is a young goat ladies and gentlemen the dps on this weapon is insane it can just absolutely melt when you're in someone's face using this it sends them into confusion and disarray it has a real shock and awe effect actually however you cannot put scopes on it and it just completely lacks at range for that reason i'm gonna have to put it in zero build only this is just something that you get up in people's grill with and you may not even be carrying this into the end game, but you're gonna have a lot of fun using it while you are. Moving to the shotguns, we have the brand new Sovereign shotgun. And this has a unique effect of firing much slower when you're aiming down the sight and collecting the rounds quite a bit closer. But when you're in hip fire, it's essentially an automatic shotgun. But this also means that in the middle of build battles, you'll be hitting very disappointing hip fire shots. And for that reason, this is definitely a zero build only weapon. When people have no defense is when this weapon shines and you can get it right off drop from a mythic. And I'll rank the mythic a bit later. Next, we have the hammer pump which is stepped up by virtue of better shotguns leaving the game. And I'm going to put this in build only just because it is the hardest hitting shotgun, but it operates the slowest. And you're really going to get the maximum potential out of it whenever you're editing and firing. You're doing the whole build battle style. Moving to the gatekeeper, this continues to be the best shotgun in the game. 
It only has three rounds by default, and that is its major flaw. But if you take it to a bunker, which people are using less often than ever, you can put a magazine on it. I'll do a video here in the near future talking about the best mods for all of these weapons. So again, subscribe by the way. But just know that if you pick up that gatekeeper and you hit your shots, even with only three rounds in the magazine, you stand a good chance of eliminating someone, even in zero build mode. When it comes to the two cover items, that being the shield bubble and the porta bunker, I'm definitely going to be favoring the shield bubble this season, and I'm actually going to be telling you not to pick up the porta bunker at all. And this is simply because it doesn't exist in build mode. And when you're in zero build, this thing is just going to make you a hard target, and unfortunately, it doesn't block any of the new items of this season, that being the War Machine gloves, the Captain America shield. So with the way these Marvel powers function this season, you actually lock yourself down and make yourself an easier target by using a Porta Bunker. Now I'm gonna grade the two movement items against each other. Currently it's the Shockwave grenades and War Machine's jetpack. And the jetpack is far and away the better of these two items. It combines quite well with a lot of ambient movement tech that's on the map. There's also a very interesting bunny hopping exploit that you can do that essentially gives you infinite movement. Not only that, the shockwaves run out very fast and they're incredibly hard to find, especially in this season where we're starting out with more weapons than usual in the loot pool. So in that sense, I'll put them at the top of useless. That doesn't mean they're truly useless, but if you're going into endgame with these, your options are much more limited. Quick note, you can collect firefly jars from the northern part of the map, and it's been that way for the entire chapter. However, I never see anyone using these. Fire is essentially useless as a gimmick within this game, and these have to be at the very bottom of useless for that reason. Trust me, nothing else is going to fall below this. Quick note on the fishing rod, this can be used to pick up loot that is a distance from you, but that's a very niche situation, and because of that, it's also going to be in useless, but right above the firefly jars. Next, we have the new War Machine shoulder-mounted turret, and this thing is kind of interesting. It's a bit of a rework of the briefcase turret they had in an earlier chapter. However, it is severely nerfed in terms of damage. The way it functions is it goes through a bit of a target acquisition process and then fires a small burst and each of these rounds only does five damage. This was really their attempt to make it balanced because really the briefcase turret was quite unbalanced and I actually made a video about that in the past. Sadly I think they went too far and currently this shoulder mounted turret is useless. In a game like Fortnite where you only have five item slots there is going to be no real situation where you're going to be choosing this over other options. Now we have War Machine's Arsenal and this thing is really damn good. Good. Depending on what kind of loadout you're using, you could definitely replace your rifle with this weapon. And it 100% excels in zero build mode where people just can't build cover on themselves. So it's going to have to go in the best. You're less likely to take this than the jetpack or the shield bubble since those are hard counters and pretty much mandatory this season. But you're going to get a lot of benefit if you choose to run the arsenal. Next we have Captain America's shield. And to me the projectile part of this item is not that interesting. It does a bit of damage and it has quite a wide boomerang effect. But more importantly is that you can charge and block damage with it. And this makes it very similar to the ballista shield of old. Though I should note you cannot fire a weapon when you are in charge mode with this you have to switch off of the shield to get to another weapon in spite of this there are still quite a few broken exploits and tech you can do with this so i feel really weird on this shield it borders between the best and the useless. Currently, I'm going to put it up in the best because it rewards smart thinking and it lets you get away with a lot for free. But I expect this to change immensely as Epic Games nerfs in this season as they normally do to the initial items. Moving into the mythics, we have Dr. Doom's Magical Gauntlets. And these things are great. I actually think they're better than War Machine. And because of that, I'm going to put War Machine down to build only because I think War Machine's arsenal really benefits when people try to box up, hunker down, stay in place. But it doesn't do so well in a high mobility meta of zero build. These arcane gauntlets, shot for shot, do much more. And they have an alternate fire that is a large energy bomb that blows away the builds pretty efficiently. However, there's only one on the map, so you gotta compete to get this. But it is worth competing for because it also comes with the Mythic Monarch Pistol. 
And how could this be anything but best? A step above even the legendary Monarch Pistol. Truth be told, Doctor Doom might be the single best drop spot in the game right now, just in terms of how many assets he gives you. It's not necessarily the best coins, but you have such a variety of assets when you go there. Next, we have Emma Frost's Burst Rifle, and this is also really, really, really peak. Honestly, whether you're using the Monarch or the striker burst you're going to be tearing people up and the mythics are just a step above that however sovereign shotgun distinctly zero build though it is probably the best shotgun in zero build you can get this thing within the first three to four minutes of the game and just absolutely run over the lobby however it's going to come with the least useful coin of all that being mysterio's coin and all this coin does is give you invisibility when you're crouched it may sound good but it actually removes the item from your hand when you crouch so it's essentially useless for doing an ambush. You can't even heal while invisible. So for that reason, I'm going to have to call this coin useless. And I'm going to have to put it down under the fishing rod just because it's a damn shame for something that should be this powerful or this special or this unique to be useless. I imagine most people aren't actually going to be going for Mysterio this season just because his loot is the least game changing of all the bosses. Doctor Doom has the siphon coin and this is really really good though I think it's probably better in build mode. I'm not going to say it's build only I'm going to put it at the very top bordering on best but it's just that in zero build when you have an overshield that constantly regenerates things like siphon become a bit less important. Having siphon coin in build mode lets you play so aggressive, so ignorant, so belligerent. And it really helps when you take a dangerous fight, win and get third partied, and you just got 75 health or shield back. But again, it's something I would only prioritize in build mode. Much more important universally, I think, is Emma Frost's coin because this gives you radar. The recon effect of this medallion is so damn important. It can make or break your games. It gives you such a huge advantage in the end game circles, especially if there's buildings involved. You're essentially granted ESP. So this is the coin that I would lock in every game if I can, especially if you're a competitive minded player. Now, before we go, I wanna rank all these heals in terms of importance, because sometimes I see newer, less experienced players deliberating over what healing items they should take and by the way i think this is a one healing item meta currently because you're always going to want a shotgun you're always going to want a rifle you're always going to want a movement item and now you definitely need shield bubbles if you're in zero build mode and if you're not in zero build mode there's a couple of gimmicks that you can really abuse to make building difficult for your opponents it's also important to note that the siphon function favors your health over your shield so if you have health damage it's going to heal that first and with that in mind our top tier heals are going to be the flowberry fizz and the flowberry and i debate this a little bit because i actually think the flowberry lasts longer and it's quicker to use so so if you can get a decent sized stack of Flowberries, it might actually be the play. However, Flowberry Fizz can be used on your squad, so it really comes down to your gameplay style. Next we have Chug Splash, and this is just because of their universality. These can heal your health or shield, though it's only 20 per. Again, another item that can heal your squad as well, which gives it a nice little bonus. Ever since the big shield changes where you can use them while moving, and they heal you over time as well, these have become a kingpin shield item, definitely taking the place above the minis and the shield fish though if you're in build mode i think the minis are a bit more useful shield fish ultimately is gimp because it only heals you for 40 per fish so you get less healing out of a stack of this than you do out of a stack of small shields next we have the med kits another item that benefited from the healing on the move update floppers can go right under that just because of their easy use and then we have various foods most importantly of these foods is the coconut because like the chug it is a universal healing item. Underneath them is the other food items, mushrooms, cabbages, and at the very bottom is bandages. And honestly, I don't even wanna put the bandages in the healing items. I'm gonna put these under the firefly jar because they are less than useless. They take up space on the ground that could be occupied by better items. They are everywhere. I've had situations where I've literally died because all I saw on the ground was bandages. And there's no situation where you're gonna be carrying them with you unless you are truly desperate. And to me, that's the worst way to justify an item in a video game is that we have to have bad items so that players have bad items to pick up. That's why most battle royales have pistols in the first place, and thankfully, Fortnite doesn't really succumb to that pressure. 
Do you agree with the way I rank these items or maybe you disagree? Either way, comment down below and tell me what your go-to loadout is. And maybe check out this video next to me where I give some tips on how to use the new items correctly and get a solo victory with the new Gwenpool skin. I'll be putting up tutorials, mod guides, and a bunch of other content in the future, so I recommend you subscribe as well. And I will catch you all in the next video.